All right. Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Um, today we're continuing our Bible series mm -hmm. here and we're going to be looking at the first book of Samuel. That's the first book of Samuel in the Old Testament. So please open your Bibles and um, turn to the first book of Samuel, um, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. So that's first book of Samuel or 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 and here we read then Hannah prayed my heart rejoices in the Lord the Lord has made me strong now I have an answer for my enemies I rejoice because you rescued me no one is holy like the Lord there is no one besides you there is no rock like our God. Stop acting so proud and haughty. Don't speak with such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows what you have done. He will judge your actions. The bow of the mighty is now broken, and those who stumbled are now strong. Those who were well fed are now starving, and those who were starving are now full. The childless woman now has seven children, and the woman with many children wastes away. The Lord gives both death and life. He brings some down to the grave, but raises others up. The Lord makes some poor and others rich. He brings some down and lifts others up. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes placing them in seats of honor for all the earth is the lord's and he has set the world in order he will protect his faithful ones but the wicked will disappear in darkness no one will succeed by strength alone those who fight against the lord will be shattered he thunders against them from heaven the lord judges throughout the earth he gives power to his king he increases the strength of his anointed one. Oh, bless you, your most word. Placing our faith in God. Placing our faith in God. So a little bit of background here. Uh, this is the first book of Samuel. Um, the author is uncertain. We don't know who wrote it. Um, but it's we're still in the Old Testament historical books. And the time period covered is from the last judge um, to King um, Solomon's reign. So that's the time period covered here. So the context here of the passage we just read is important. Um, we want to understand uh, what happened earlier, what precedes. So Hannah is one of two wives of Akania. Um, that's from the Hebrew meaning uh, El has purchased, right? So God has purchased. So who practiced, uh, Akania practiced uh, polygamy, right? Um, he has another wife, uh, less, um, who's less favored, but she bears more children, and her name is Penina. So Hannah is childless, uh, there's a rivalry between the two women. Um, remember at the time um, for women to be childless or barren um, was a disgrace uh, or seen as a disgrace in Israel, Israelite society and um, also a sign of not being blessed that as, as if God um, uh, doesn't care about this that, that, that woman or women who are childless um, um, not exactly like a curse but something like that uh, um, so it was a disgrace for a woman um, not to bear children. So, uh, so with this rivalry with, between the two uh, women, um, uh, there's uh, Penina, the other wife, she mocks Hannah about her childlessness. We read it in the previous chapters, year after year, until Hannah cannot take it anymore. She turns to God, and then she appears before um, the priest, Eli. Um, Eli, the priest, um, the, uh, misreads, right? He doesn't understand, sees Hannah's utter despair and thinks she's drunk, that she had too much to drink, alcohol, right? 
Um, however, um, uh, there is um, a uh, vow that Hannah makes to God, and God hears um, that vow, right? It's again, remember, we're talking about placing our faith in God. So this is the vow uh, that Hannah uh, makes to God in 1 Samuel chapter 111, which reads, And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime, and as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. God bless me in his words. So Hannah places her faith and total trust in God um, in the midst of all the despair and being mocked and um, in such despair um, um, because she believes that God can do what nobody else can do. So in the verses we see here, um, we see Hannah's uh, rejoicing in God and God's faithfulness. Uh, when you read those verses carefully, I encourage you to read um, everything about Hannah you can. She's, she's one of the, um, yeah, among the most um, amazing examples of uh, uh, people, men or women, regardless, uh, placing their faith in God. And uh, so I encourage you to read about Hannah. Um, so um, as we see in our text uh, today, uh, we see a total, acknowledge, uh, total surrender and acknowledgement and understanding of who God is and what he's like. So in verse 2, we see no one is holy like the, like the Lord. And in verse 8, she under Hannah understands, for all the earth is the Lord's and he has set the world in order. So verses 9 to 10, I just read it. Very uh, slowly here, verses 9 to 10, we read, He will protect his faithful ones, but the wicked will disappear in darkness. No one will succeed by strength alone. Those who fight against the Lord will be shattered. He thunders against them from heaven. The Lord judges throughout the earth. He gives power to his king. He increases the strength of his anointed one. God bless you know his word. So what this means here is um, when we read about God protecting his faithful ones, that's us as believers as well, Jesus protects us, um, that doesn't mean that God, you know, uh, can take us, you know, call us home whenever he decides to do, he's sovereign, that happens too. But um, um, the key to understand this is um, in the last part where it says, no one will succeed by strength alone. So in other words, apart from Jesus Christ, we have his absolute truth here. No one will succeed by strength alone or a person in their own ability or resources or whatever apart from God, right? So that's where we see the contrast between God uh, protecting and blessing uh, people whose hearts are bent towards him and the wicked who, um, who are... Uh, rebellious against God, they would disappear um, into darkness. And this darkness is, well, um, that's, you know, eternally speaking, hell. Um, unfortunately, those who decide to not accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So something really just to consider here. However, we have the, um, the, um, the question here, right, that we all want to ask. Um, and um, you, you also may want to ask and should ask is, are we going to place our faith in God like Hannah does? Are we going to place our faith in God like Hannah? So we learn here that um, placing our faith in and trust in God is always best. Why? You may ask why. Um, what are you called to do the same? Because, why, why do we place our faith in God? Because of God's holiness. God's holiness is one of the reasons we are called to place our faith and trust in God. Mm -hmm. In 1 Samuel 2, verses 1, um, uh, Hannah's prayer of praise, right? it's the man made title, um, Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. 
Now I have an answer for my enemies. I rejoice because you rescued me. And also, um, it's an acknowledgement of God's sovereignty. We read in Psalm 147.5, How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. I'll read it again. How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. And God's faithfulness, right? God's faithfulness is one of his eternal attributes. Um, we can read in Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 22, Paul writes, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. God bless you this word. And so as we learn in Hannah's example here, um, God blesses the weak, uh, but not the proud. Um, uh, th that is those who act in their own strength. In other words, um, consider this. Um, before God, our Lord Jesus Christ, as God in the flesh, we can, be, um, we can always be uh, too proud, but we can never be too humble. Right? Before God, we can always be too pride, prideful and proud, but we can never be too humble. So something to consider. And uh, James writes in the book of James in the New Testament, chapter 4, six, verse 6, James 4, verse 6. And he gives great grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God bless the reading of this word. So may this be our disposition of heart to be humble before God. That is who Jesus Christ is, and that is who we are called to be as we imitate and follow our Lord Jesus. Amen.